is off to another stellar start. Coach Lute Olson's Wildcats, winners of 12 in a row, looking for a sweep in their first road trip of the conference season. Washington State's been the Pac-10 sleeper team. The Cougars want a repeat of what happened the last time they hosted a ranked team in Pullman. The fans ready to rush the floor once more. It's the Wildcats and the Cougars next on FSN. On a crisp midwinter's night in Pullman, Washington, Brian Tower stands out against a periwinkle sky at the center of campus. Not far away, Cougars fans cutting their holiday break a few days short to convene at Beasley Coliseum's Real Court, side of a pivotal Pac-10 matchup early in the conference season. With FSN Arizona's and Arizona Wildcat great Bob Elliott, I'm Kara Capuano. I do a lot of my work up here in the Northwest region, so we're pretty confident we know a lot about the Cats and the Cougars, and Bob, the the Wildcats seem to go this season as their point guard, Mustafa Shakur, goes. He's been the real deal. Yes, he has. Mustafa has come back for his senior year on a vengeance, on a mission to prove to everybody that he's the top point guard in the country. He's learned how to shoot it well from the outside. If you get the chance to penetrate, yes, he will dish it to a teammate. You back off of him, there he is again from the outside. You talk about dishing to a teammate. The scoring on the starting five Arizona is phenomenal. Every one of these guys can shoot the three. Everyone can penetrate, everyone can pass, and that's what's made them so potent this year. How lucky is Coach Lute Olsen? His five starters are all in the top 20 in the conference in scoring. For Washington State, the scoring machine has been junior Derek Lowe. Yeah, Derek Lowe is to the Cougars what Mustafa Shakur is to the Wildcats. Yes, he can also dime and shoot it out from the outside. But the young guy, he might be from Hawaii. You think he's got that, hey, I'm a hang loose kind of attitude? No, he's a fierce competitor trying to bring it every night. The Cougars full of fierce competitors, and this game is going to be won by the team, which can enforce its will on the opposition. The Cougars want to keep the scoring low. The Wildcats want to run and gun. Which force will prevail? Coming up next, Wildcats and Cougars. Welcome back to Frio Court. Butch the mascot getting the Cougs fans fired up. Not that you need any more incentive when you're hosting the number seven team in the country. Arizona's lineup, you got to get used to these five names because these starters put in 187 of 200 total minutes in the victory at Washington. They play pretty much all the time, Bob. Yes, they do, but they also get the job done. That's why they're on this nice little win streak. Speaking of get the job done, what else can you say about Arizona coach Lude Olson, the Hall of Famer, most Pac-10 wins of any coach in league history, and I heard today that he is more relaxed and comfortable with this squad than he has been in a few years. He just loves this team. Yes, this particular group of guys gets along really well, and the chemistry that's off the court translates to chemistry on the court. Coach Olson saying yesterday that he thinks that this Washington State team is far and away the best Cougar squad he's seen in years, in part because they're all a year older from the youngsters out there last year. And they're familiar with Tony Bennett, so therefore these guys know the type of system that he's going to want, and they're projecting it, they're playing it, they're doing a good job, and there's Tony right there. First year as a collegiate head coach, first year in the Pac-10, but not the first time he's coached against Arizona. Cougars fans remember, in his first year as an assistant, his father, Dick, got sick before an Arizona game, and he had to come out and coach, and he said his heart was pounding for that one. Yeah, Tony said at this point, you know, you no longer become the assistant coach, you become the son. Why is my father sitting with a blood pressure cup <laughs> on him in the locker room? Unbelievable. That is 61-57 win for Arizona. Bob, let's talk about your keys to the game. Well, I think for Arizona, one is hit the old glass hard, offensive rebounding, and also contain Derek Lowe, because he's the key for the Cougars. But for the, for the Washington State Cougars, 50s. I'm not talking about temperature. It would have been nice if it was in the 50s around the day, but I'm, <laughs> Try talking the about 30s. I'm talking about keep the score in the 50s. And the second is when you're playing against Arizona, they are a finesse team. You want to be physical with them. And one of the ways that they can be physical, Coach Bennett has decided to insert number 33, senior forward Ivory Clark, into the starting lineup. 
Nikola Koprovica, the freshman out of Serbia, had been starting the first three conference games. What does number 33 bring to the table that's a little bit different for the Cougs? Well, for one, he's an older gentleman. He's a senior. He understands the system. Two is defensively. He's a better defender than Koprovica. But third is he's one of the top rebounders. So if you want to try to keep the offensive glass for Arizona calm, you get good defensive rebounds, one shot and up. The series history has been heavily tilted toward the Wildcats. Loot Olsen, 43-3, and all time against Washington State. They've won 41 of the last 42 meetings, and it's been a long time since the Cougs beat the Cats here in Pullman. Chase Buttinger, the fab freshman for Arizona, wasn't even born the last time the Cougars were able to get the Cats here in Eastern Washington. But Kara, all of that means nothing. Washington State is playing well. They win the tip right off the bat because it's kind of like the person that says the chance of getting hit by lightning is a million and one, but if you got hit, it becomes one to one. <laughs> That's exactly Ball right. Ball game starting right now. We were trying to bring them inside. Arizona will pad his own defense. Make a right to Clark, unfortunately, off of the mark. Cougars want a quick start to set the tone because the Wildcats can score, score, and score some more. Washington State also coming out in their man to man defense that they like to run. Marcus Williams for three. Off the mark, and Robbie Cowgill hauls down the board. That's a good sign for Washington State. Cowgill is the kind of guy, he's going to have to bring it for the Cougs this evening. He's going to have to come up with double digits and rebounds. Derek Lowe straps for his own rebound and has the presence of mind to find Clark. See, that's what I like about Derek Lowe. The guy is always thinking. He's a competitor. He followed his own shot, found Clark. Clark lays it up. Washington State draws blood first. Juwan McClellan drives, and there's Clark to block it. There's that defensive presence that we talked about. Starting Clark already has paid dividends for Tony Bennett's team. He scores at one end. He blocks the shot at the under. Picks up the loose ball. Arizona, this time, coming back in the man-to-man. -man. Sometimes Luke will go to that. Derek Lowe blows right by him. Yes, he went by him. A defensive lapse by Arizona. The rotation from the weak side of the floor to help out on the strong side on ledge below driving to the basket was not there. Cats looking for a good shot, an open shot, trying to be patient. Shakur off the screen. Off the mark. Weaver hauls it in. Notice how Washington State gets the defensive rebound, walks up the floor. This is going to be a game of contrasting styles. Washington State likes to keep it in the 50. There's one's getting to the 90s or 100. Cowgill inside. Great feed from David Harmeling. Arizona is not going to be able to play a man-to-man -man defense against Washington State. They've already capitalized on three possessions with backdoor cuts and movement. Arizona needs to stick to the zone. Great ball movement, though, by Washington State. He down low to Radinovic. Wow, from that angle, he hits. Impressive. That is the infamous high low. You get the ball to the high post, kick it down to the low post. Low guy gets position, puts it in the hole. Next, nice pass down low. Cowgirls got the mismatch. Against Mustafa Shakur, they go cross court to Clark. Now that's not that's not Clark's shot. No, okay. that's just his ninth three attempt of the year, and he's over so far. Cowgill with the block on Marcus Williams. That was a difficult block because he was coming from behind. He, you have to block the ball and not make contact yeah, with the body. the body. And Robbie was good at that that time. He's a long kid. He's 6'10", 6 6'11", 6 long arms. He was able to go up above Marcus Williams to make that block. Calgo ranked sixth in the Pac-10 Conference in blocks last season as a sophomore. David Harmelin for three. And Washington State is on fire. They have taken all the positiveness they've had this entire year and bringing it all right now. There's a reason why this club is 13 and two, because they've been playing good basketball for Tony Bennett. Washington State, four of seven from the floor. Wildcats, one for five. Shakur with the drive. Clark is there to disrupt. 
Weaver was thinking transition there and then wisely did the Cougar Slowdown. I think it's a new dance that they're doing here in Coleman, the Cougar it's Slowdown. A, it's a dance that's been successful. Nice little backdoor cut that time by David Hummeling. Robbie Cowgill, 11 to two, Bob. Hey, when it's going good, it's going good. And Washington State's gonna continue to ride this wave and Derek Lowe from Hawaii <laughs> all the way as long as they can. Williams blocked by Cowgill. Washington State gets the ball back. It was tipped off of the Wildcats. Ivory Clark inserted into the starting lineup and he's bringing some kind of magic to the Palouse tonight. Coops up big. Washington State opened its victory against Arizona State, seven of eight from the field, and they're off to a similar quick start tonight against the Wildcats. Yes, they are, and they're doing it by making very good decisions on offensive end. Watch his backdoor cut. We're gonna see the pass right in there. Robbie Calgale finishes off. Nice pass by Harmeling, and that's one of the five buckets for the Cougs. 11 to two, that's a good start. And the thing that's kind of, the thing I like about Washington State, besides this quick start here in the first four minutes, watch Washington State in the first four minutes of the second half. They are very, very potent during that time. They open the second half against Arizona State, five of six. Of course, if there's one team in the Pac-10 that you couldn't really call it putting into a hole, I think it would be Arizona, because they can score in bursts too. Oh yeah, they've had runs of 20 or more point difference between the opposition. Derek Lowe for three. Off the mark. Shakur looking for Williams in transition. Coach Bennett said that the goal is to have the Cats shoot over the Cougs, try to keep them in front. And you notice how quickly the Cougs tried to get back to avoid any transition points. Well, every once in a while, Tony Bennett may even have his team only send two guys to the offensive glass and have the other three retreat to make sure that uh, the other team, Arizona, does not have a fast break opportunity against the Cougs. Buttinger for three. Rudinovich, offensive glass. And that's one of Arizona's aces in the pocket, getting those putbacks. Yes, and Yvonne has made a living this year getting down low. Probably is more gifted to be out on the perimeter shooting the shot, but given this lineup and the fact that he's the biggest of the five out on the floor, it's forced him to have to go down low this year. And he's been very successful at it. At 6'10", they need him bodying down on the block to do his thing. Armelene from the corner. In and out. Washington State's doing an excellent job of picking up all the Arizona shooters. Because you must guard all five guys. You can't say I'm going to double team somebody because these are all very good passes. They will find the open man. Coach Romar said on Thursday night, this is a team that can score, distribute, and rebound better than any team in the nation. Juwan McCullen took a hard fall to the floor. Nice pass from Shakur. Watch the double pump and watch, he loses balance and he falls out of the screen. He, what you couldn't see was yes, he landed hard on his back, but also his head snapped back and his head hit the floor also, but he seemed to bounce back from that. That might be the advantage of having like an afro instead of a short hair You get a little, <laughs> little extra pad. cushion. You get a little extra cushion on that one. McClellan hit the deck hard last year and it ended his season at only 45 minutes. He had some academic ineligibility issues in the fall for the Wildcats. Once he was able to play in only his second game, ended up tearing some ligaments in his left wrist and was sidelined for the rest of the year. So Wildcat fans felt like they lost a year with McClellan last year. They love having him back this year. Clover makes one of two, came into the game shooting 79% from the line. Arizona as a team is a very, very good free throw shooting team. Shooting at around 72% from the line. There's his zone. Notice how you have a shift. Low finds Cowgill in the little hole in the middle and he makes him pay. Cowgill has the opportunity to have a good game. Because he's so tall and long, nobody can block his shot on this team. Ivory Clark battles McClellan for the rebound. A little return on investment. 
Keeping Ivory in the game. There's that rebounding that Fabrizio could not be bringing to the squad. Low for three. In and out. Clark with three of the Cougars' eight rebounds in these early minutes. Buttinger for three. Wow, I can't believe I'm watching the same Arizona team that shot over 76% at Washington on Thursday. Hey, different time, different place, different arena. Wildcats have opened conference play shooting over 60% in their three games. And in this one, not the same situation. They're shooting 18.2% right now, Bob. So you would think that uh, the law of averages means that you start off cold and start hitting shots later on. Long as a coach will not mind, as long as you're taking good shots, you think eventually they're going to fall. I'd have some confidence in these shooters if that's who I was suiting up. Inside the homeling. Oh, point blank range. He used the wrong hand. He tried to go with his right hand on the left side. He always with the opposite hand. That way you've got the defender against your body and not against the ball. Fundamentals from a big man who knew a thing or two about how to work the glass. Give it up, give it up. Don't try to force it. Kyle Weaver with the steal and the finish with a flourish. Weaver's first bucket of the game. Basketball is a game of choices and making the right choice. That time, Chase Bunninger made a very lazy bounce pass, a bad choice to make at that time. Williams with a little reverse, and I remember in the second half against Washington on four straight possessions from either side of the backup, it was all day. Reverse Williams, reverse Williams. Yeah, he has such a good touch. Marcus likes to use the opposite side because what it does is it puts the rim between the defender and you. So for the, for the defender trying to block the shot, he's got to go through the rim. It's not going to happen. Last time I checked, that was a piece of iron up there. <laughs> exactly. And there's Clark. I'm very impressed by the big man passing from the Cougars so far. The passing of the Cougs all together. Top to bottom. Very good. What a great move from Shakur to draw the foul there. Ten points in the paint for Washington State, and they've got a ten-point lead right now over the seventh-ranked Wildcats of Arizona. Working from home changed my life. It all started when I was ball on FSN Arizona is brought to you by Red Lobster for the seafood lover in you by Pepper Viner Homes. More choice, more quality, more home by Perry Heating and Cooling and by Dairy Queen DQ something different. Washington State has found a lot of holes against Arizona's zone, and the big men are passing well. The guards are doing their thing. Bob, what have you seen, especially in that last possession? What I see is the ability of Washington State to find the holes. For example, see, there's a hole. That's a place you would try to go. So watch how the ball moves around. Get it. Nice pass. Find the hole. And then, therefore, they get the bucket. Mustafa Shakur at the line, fouled before the break. Another fine free throw shooter for the Arizona Wildcats. Just over 78% on the season, which is actually a little bit lower than what he's done in his career from the charity strike. Well, the thing about playing as a zone, you have to be a little bit cerebral. It's not like finding a man and say, I can beat this man on the dribble, I can penetrate. No, you're looking for the gaps, you're looking for the holes, make quick passes, and when you have a shot, you take it. Shakur's first two of the game come from the line. Cut Washington State lead to eight. Washington State beating Arizona State. There it is. He drives through it, and now Radinovich joins the block party. Clark with the hands. They've got numbers. Radinovich is there. And he's nimble for a big man. And a charge is called on Marcus Williams. Again, basketball is a game of choices. First it was a two-on-two, two, then it became a three-on-three. Three. So if you're Marcus Williams coming on the right side of your screen, no, you don't go flying into somebody. At this point, you take what's given to you, which is make the choice. 
pull up the 10 or 11 foot jump shot off the backboard, then therefore you avoid the charge. If you try to take it in too far, you're asking for what happened, which is the charging foul. Now see, there's a guy that had a premeditated move. I'm gonna catch it and make a pass down low. Well, the pass wasn't there. And dare I say, a poor choice. <laughs> yes, yes, a poor choice. He would not get a star on his paper for that. I don't think answer. that there's any gold stars for that one, though. Oh, he got hit by his own man. Ooh. In the head, head to head. And Kovacica in Clark. action for the first time He's is bleeding blood. at the right eyebrow. He's going to have to get that tended to. Clark is a little bit woozy at the free throw stripe. They're asking for the training team to come out. Okay, and Clark is bleeding also. You can see it because I can see oh, the blood on, on the floor. The floor. Now, what's bleeding, I can't tell because his head is down. Watch Copa Visa coming to the lane and then turn and bam, right there. Oof. Head to head. Almost looked like brow to brow. Oh, this is going to be the angle, right side of your screen. Ooh, Ooh, nasty. Right side of the head to the right side of the head. Not for the faint of heart, my goodness. Coach Lute Olson wants him to clear Clark off the floor. Get the game going. Every Clark being walked off. You know, they covered him up so quickly. We even not, have not been able to tell. Okay, we're, okay, it's right above. It looks like a boxer type hit yes. right above the eyebrow. Which you know, there's a bone right there, which is why that's a hot spot in the back in the boxing match. Where if you get enough hits right there, you see a guy open up. That looks like the spot that Clark was hit on, right on that bone above the eyebrow. I'm having flashbacks of Rocky asking to be cut in the <laughs> corner of the <laughs> ring. Go, go cut, me. <laughs> cut me, man. <laughs> Clark, four points, four rebounds, and a block in the first half of this first half. I'm sure Cougars fans don't want to see number 33 on the bench for long. Number four sitting right next to him, and the training staff's going to have their hands full as these two guys try to get sewn up or taped up or whatever they have to do. In the meantime, Taylor Rochester on the floor. Harmeling, Cowgill, Weaver, and Lowe for the Cougars, the substitutions for 4 and 33. Okay, there's one again, 1-3-1 one, one zone. Shifting back. We got Daniel Dillon on the baseline, running back and forth. Daniel Dillon probably the sixth man right now for the Wildcats. He's seeing most of the minutes off the bench. Versatile. Nice Load of numbers pass. goes to Weaver. Ah. Weaver ends up running into a baseline chair and Shakur. It's a bloodbath right now, Bob. It's a bloodbath, but it's a bloodbath that Washington State is taking good advantage of, even though they're the ones that lost two players on one play by the two hoops running each other. 11 minutes have been run off the clock, and Arizona, the top scoring offense in the Pac-10 with nine points on the board. And a turnover. But a lot of that... You must credit Washington State for being very patient and being in the right place defensively, but also the choices that the Arizona Wildcats are making when they have the basketball. They're not making good choices. I will say, though, that Arizona hasn't made all bad choices. They've taken some good looks. Their shots just aren't falling. It's got to feel very weird for them to be shooting the way they shot Thursday night and then come here and Mustafa Shakur silences me with the three, but they're just not hitting like they were the other day. No, no, no they're not, but you know, hey, it's called the broadcaster's curse. You know, if you say somebody's not shooting well, they shoot well. You say they are shooting well, they don't shoot well. I mean, it's, that's just how it goes. But one thing is for sure, Washington State has been playing at Arizona's tempo. Look at the amount of points on the board. Air Washington State came this game thinking if we keep it in the 50s, we have a chance. Well, they're on pace right now to be closer to the 70s which would be the kind of style that would fit Arizona. I just feel like they've been patient, though. I mean, how much more could they slow it down? No, no, they're taking good shots. Yeah. Here's Daniel Dillon. Came to Arizona as a defensive specialist. He's the kind of guy that Lute Olsen can bring into the game. 
He's not going to make mistakes. He's not going to do anything great and spectacular. But Luke knows that he can count on Daniel Dillon to be there defensively, keep the ball moving offensively, give somebody a breather, and get a starter back into the game. Taylor Rock is being called with the offensive control foul there. Now hounding Dillon on the other end. There's Buttinger. And that's his shot. Smooth operator. Chase Bunninger. Remember now, this is a young man who could be playing volleyball on the National Olympic team. Watch his hang time. He has a 42-inch vertical jump. He draws the contact going to the basket, puts it off the glass and in. The Cougs, though, still enjoy a 19-14 lead with 7.49 left. We'll be back. As you after an energy drink. Unfortunately, so Welcome back to Frio Court, Washington State with a five-point lead over its visitors. And we haven't even had a chance to show you yet that Bob and I are honorary members tonight of the Zoo Crew. They've actually placed us in what they call the cage, which is the student section here. And you can see the Cougars fans going nuts behind us. We're at a table. We're actually shaking most of the time. Yeah, when they start jumping up and down and stomping their feet, uh, we can feel it also. Absolutely. It's actually pretty fun. And Fun right now for Arizona is hoping that number 34 takes control of the game a little bit. You know, Chase has shown in his freshman year the ability to kind of take over when it's needed. It's not like he ever forces it, so I think he kind of senses right now we're having a tough time as a team getting started. All of a sudden he goes to the hole, knocks down the old-fashioned three-point play. He's the kind of guy that can take over. Thursday night in Washington, he started the team off. He got them started. He has that ability to jumpstart everybody. He could be contagious on the offensive end of the floor. The three-point play, his first points in the game, but he beat lead all the Cats with 23 in the win against the Huskies. Tied for third with Radenovich, his teammate in the conference in scoring. There's that 1-3-1 one, one again. Again, watch Dylan on the bottom. He's got to go from coast to coast. Shot clock under 10. Shakur gets a hand on it. Shot clock now at 7. Some different personnel out on the floor. Caleb Forrest, the sophomore, down in there battling amongst the trees to get Tyler a blow, still waiting on Clark's return. And both teams ice cold from three-point range in this game. Weaver Hall's in the board. Talking about the frost beyond the arc. Cougars one of nine from downtown. Cats one of seven. Yeah, Buttiger again seems to be at the, wherever the ball is recently. Nice pass. Beautiful dish. Mustafa Shakur showing you why he's third in the nation in distribution. Yeah, he made a good choice that time. Almost opened up the path for Daniel Dillon to come right behind him for the layup. Cats got into trouble in Seattle and went on a 15-0 run to end the first half. Again, Wildcats on a run, and all of a sudden, we've got a great game. Two-point difference. Shot clock at five. First we've seen from Jordan Hill, the freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. Washington State still playing a man-to-man. Ball goes in the post. Yvonne's a good passer out of the post. Most of the time. <laughs> he took a chance. It was a choice. It was a choice. And Ivory Clark with the butterfly bandage over his right brow, ready to check back in for Washington State. The prize fighter on the floor, number 33. You know, when a young man gets injured, and goes out of the game. I always like to watch them for the first minute. They either come out with a vengeance, like they want to come out here and do something good, but that can be good and bad. They might do more than what they're used to doing. You've got to stay within yourself, man. Or else they come out a little bit on the timid side. So let's see how Clark does. Cats have clamped down on defense. What happened to all those backdoor cuts we saw from the Cougars early on? Shot clock again at five. Harmeling for three. 
And when you give him time to line it up, the redshirt sophomore out of Grand Junction, Colorado will make you pay. That there was a typical Washington State possession. Run the shot clock down, get a good shot with single digits on the shot clock, and knock it down. That's how they've been successful this year. Buttinger kicked it out to Dylan. I think he was looking for a little return love, and he didn't get it. Was that a foul called on number 34 for Arizona? Wow. Buttinger being a little too aggressive down low. That's his first personal. Just the third team foul for Arizona. Marcus Williams on the bench with two. Cats fans might have thought, oh, it's okay. The Cats are resting their starters. No, unfortunately, Luke has to rest the starters. So you're seeing some different personnel out there right now with Dylan and Hill getting some minutes here in the first half. Plus, Thursday night, very fast-paced game played by Arizona, and primarily five guys played it. So even though these are young men with young legs, 38 minutes is still 38 minutes of fast-paced ball game on Thursday. Travel to Spokane, come down here today. That's a lot to ask. You see, that's when you start finding little issues like that, like a, all of a sudden traveling before you put the ball on the floor. You're just not quite as sharp as normal. Sports fans, you are seeing a game that could have gone either way. It could be Wildcats 40, Cougars 18 right now. We talked about one team opposing its will on the other, and right now the Cougars are really in control, controlling the clock, playing good defense, Still can't find the mark from three-point range, though. Jordan Hill is doing an excellent job on the defensive glass. He's doing what the team needs him to do, which is just rebound. That's not a good shot. There you go, Jordan. There you go. Woo, the big man. You were telling me he didn't play a lot of high school hoops. No, he didn't. He played two years of organized basketball, his sophomore and senior years, and that's it. But you can see the potential of this young man. He's rebounded on defensive end, an offensive board with a putback. Now, at this point, if, I, if I'm loot, I take him out of the game because you can maybe run a kid too far. He doesn't have much experience, so he's done what he's done. He will leave the game at this point with a good feeling in his mouth. Therefore, he can come back and do it again. He may not have played much, but Hill 43 and four in high school hoops. And now Ivory Clark called for the charge. And again, it's Dylan drawing. Jordan Hill, Patterson School in North Carolina, doing some damage off the bench. Washington State with a slim edge now over Arizona. It's three points separate the teams. And fans, this week, ACC Sunday Night Hoops return. Stanford taking on Virginia, the one team to beat the Wildcats there this year in a rare non-conference meeting. Then Florida State looking up at second-ranked UNC. Coverage begins with a tip-off show Sunday on FSN. You're going to want to check your local listings for game times. Cougars came out hot, Bob, starting the game on an 11-2 run where they were 5 of 8 from the floor, but since, just 5 of 18 from the field. You know, it is a 40-minute game. You can start out quickly, but it's how you finish up. That's right. And it's a game of runs, and you want to be on the one at the end of the first half and especially at the end of the second half. Mustafa Shakur, also called the chosen one. Taking command, as you're supposed to do as your senior leader point guard. Be the extension of the coach out on the floor. That's what young man has done this year. But Shakur getting a hand on it, disrupting what the Cougars are trying to do. Weaver runs out of room. Reminded of a football game where the receiver tries to turn and make a move before he's caught the ball. That's what happened to Kyle Weaver right there on this wild card Saturday. That's exactly right. Now, Mustafa, being a senior, should know better than to try to make a steal out in front of everybody. You've got the entire Creole Court family sitting here looking at it. You've got all three guys with the black and white looking at it. We have all of you at home looking at it. So you can't get too physical with somebody when you're out there wide open like that. Eyes also on. Nikola Koprovica, he's got the butterfly bandage on the right brow to Mira Clark, and he is in the game. The be bandaged ones on the floor for the Cougs. Armaling for three. Rattles at home. Armaling likes that shot. He's shooting like he means it over the season, 38% from three-point land. So he's a big guy that can let it fly and knock it down. Kick 
passing it to Shakur. Could help defense from Harmony. No, that's it, that's too much. Too much. Oh, too much dribbling. Yeah. Too much trying to be individualistic in his moves. What's made this Arizona team so good is all five guys working as a unit. Five guys shooting, five guys passing, five guys looking for one another. Now some guy off the dribble trying to show the fact that I can create my own shot. That's when the difference, that was on the oh. flashback. Oh, Clark trying to bring it to the whole town hall at that time. That's right. Denied. Denied, denied. Rodinovic calling for it in transition from about half court and makes it sing. Now that's Arizona basketball this year, where you, all of a sudden you suck the defense in and then here's a trailer. And it makes no difference who the trailer is because they can all shoot the three. So at this point, you got a fast break. Everybody's running down. Notice, Rodinovic is not in your screen. He's going to come into your screen, spot up, and get the pass. So all of a sudden, hey, where is he? There he is, the Serbian Slayer, knocking down a three <laughs> as the trailer on the break. And not the only Serbian on the floor. You were no. telling us that you heard that Radinovic knows a little something about the Koprovica family. Apparently, he's good buddies with Nikola's older brother, Jovan. Exactly, exactly. So uh, Serbia is Serbian well connection. The Serbian connection is, is alive and kicking in Pullman, Washington on January 6th. Speaking of diversity, the Pac-10 actually has 24 student athletes from 16 different countries, the most internationally diverse Division I conference in the U.S. this year, and certainly that's represented with these two teams. Oh, these two teams here. They some Aussies, some Serbians, they're doing it all. Koprovica, no. We are tied at 24. First time Washington State hasn't led since the game was scoreless. Million dollar move, five cent finish, but boy, offensive rebound and Shakur's trying to fire up the Cats. I would say that the young senior from Philadelphia is a little pumped today. He's taking it inside. He's throwing it back up off the glass. Watch him, he's saying, okay, I can get something here. Oh, bad shot, that's all right. I'll make up for it. Gets fouled, puts off the glass. Watch him try to take his teammate's hand off. You have to be careful now. Don't hit him too hard. Especially on his right hand. That's his shooting hand. <laughs> Shakur perfect from the line in this one, as he was at Washington. Nine of nine from the charity stripe Thursday night. He had 22 and 11, the second double-double this season. He's already got 10 in this one. Clark again, a little overzealous with the shoulder motions. You know, that's a good scouting report by Arizona. Clark, when he gets the ball, likes to lead with his shoulder into the hole. Anytime you lead and you're the aggressor offensively, the, the charge is going to be called on you. Think of verticality. You must go straight up and down. You start leaning into somebody, especially if it's strong with authority, you're asking for the charging call. Good job by that time by Jordan Hill to draw it. Now with 42 seconds left, you've got 33 on the shot clock. For about a six second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. So Washington State's gonna get one more possession out of this. Depends on how much time they'll have to do it though. Cats being patient right now. And that's what they want to do. They want to run the clock down. They want to play Washington State ball on this particular possession only. Take your time. Jordan, take your time. <laughs> I don't think he heard you loud enough, Bob. No. Now Derek Lowe looking to push it, but he's got some time to milk here. Kyle Weaver's wraparound pass doesn't wrap around anything. It's like Christmas wrapping without the tape. Now with three seconds left, ball being taken out of bounds. Watch arrows on to make sure they emphasize nothing easy underneath the basket. Make the ball come out, challenge the shot. Washington State, on the other hand, is going to try to make sure they get a good shot at the basket. 3.2 seconds, you're down three. You want a good look at the hole. Down to two seconds. Low off the mark. So Arizona, which trailed by double digits by 10 on several occasions in the first half, makes a nice little run at the end of the half, and they take a three-point lead into the locker room. What do you think Coach Olsen's going to say, Bob? Well, I think the main thing is that you came, you took your heat, you came back, you took the lead. Once you get the lead, keep the lead. We'll see if they can. The seventh-ranked Cats up by three at the break. We'll be right back.